They were a joke, Chris. Okay, if y'all have any questions, let me get your attention now. He's taking, trying to read those numbers on George. Yeah, I'd like to see what he's putting on oh. this, this base here. Okay. Yeah, if you want to try to read them, you can. Now, you know you don't need to worry about the numbers, but we have time. We're not trying to really... Uh, It's great that y'all have a list of the colors, because I was wondering about that. What's that? I think it's great y'all have compiled a list of the colors and the numbers. Yeah, I, I have all of that. I was wondering about that. I have it all back. Okay, that's, is that your first color you put on there now, George? Okay. Uh, well, I ran out of my color that I had. What's your color? <laughs> I like that. I'm not going to argue. 333 and 204. New pastel. Okay, good. So it's supposed to be. That's probably in that portrait set that y'all have. Yeah. No, that, that is, uh, that's Rembrandt. <laughs> oh, that's Rembrandt. Okay, that's okay. Well, this is this will be. This is a good basic flesh tone. I'm just turning it just slightly. That's good. Thank you. I appreciate it. More where those came from. Thank you. Okay, there's the divisions now, if y'all want to. I'll go through with another portrait. Now, what did he say? Okay, he's just going to go through the whole layout. For the eyes. What did he say he did? The whole thing. To get those. Okay, what he did is he took the end of the chalk and he divided it in three sections. The left eye, the middle part for the nose, and then the right eye. Right, okay. That'll be great, y'all. Just go through the whole thing. And then you make adjustments from there because maybe not everybody's eyes are the same size <clears throat> compared to their nose. But right. they are the same. You always make an adjustments, Michelle, no yeah, words you. You're you're basically laying it in there and then you adjust everything accordingly. I think. And that's what's so unique about what he does, because who would ever think to start and measure everything off of the eyes? That's the part that's so intriguing to me. Yeah, if he made them all the same, everybody looked like Howard Cosell. Did <laughs> <laughs> you remember that lady who always did Howard Cosell? No matter who she did. <laughs> you see how he's developing the nose now? Oh, this is great. I'm going to have all of this filling up your TV screen on this good, part of it. Good, good. So, is this getting video as well? Mm -hmm. I mean, audio is getting video? Yes, it all does. You will be immortalized all day long, Michelle. Okay, <laughs> immortalized. Yeah. Now, what color are you using? That's the light? This is a brown color, or a number. This part is the most unbelievable. And it blows my mind every time I see him do this again. Immediately. Yeah. I think they like you, George. <laughs> oh, no question. Oh, yeah. And then he goes to the white. There's Larry's famous drawing with the, with the lights on it. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, if you ever need anybody to just hang around and take care of Peppy while you're doing portraits, George, I volunteer. <laughs> Whatever you need. <laughs> Hold a cigarette for him. Yeah, I'll hold a cigarette for you. I don't care. He's got the expression already. That's Get the what I tell you, Manuel. That's what's magic. She looks like an actress in the sun. With Chevy Chase. With Chevy Larry Chase. What? What was that? Um, it's going to be at least a couple of weeks, you know. I got everything all set up to do it, so uh, I might even be able to have it for you in a week. Okay. If any, if anybody knows they want a copy, I'll, write, I'll, I'll start making a list today. Because uh, it takes a lot of time. We'll get it. She's pretty. Yeah, but some of the looking at the portrait, they're similar. Crazy. You know, the and the one eye. So, uh, George, even though the stuff, they have blue eyes, still make green. Yeah. It 
Okay, anybody else wants to take? Okay, let's begin. Okay. Just a second, I got to clear. Okay, all right. Y'all have a safe trip back. I got you for you. Okay, Joe. Y'all leaving? Yeah. Be careful. I know. I have to hold my wrist for a dish. Oh, well, honey. Watch. Sure. Have fun, Ari. Be careful. This will be a VHS now here. Who else? Uh, Manuel. Carolyn. And uh, did you, May, did you say yeah. you wanted one? Okay. <coughs> May and Carolyn. Anybody else want one now? Make sure I got a question. Um, I've got them. I'm sorry. Well, you just let me know later. But I'll, I might even have these in the week here because. Uh, I, without having, I had 28 tapes to do, man. I'm burned up a video recorder and everything. I had to go find a recorder. Okay. See, see, on this particular one, oh man, this is just unreal. I'm building, I'm building, up, I'm filling up the whole screen with just those sections right now, and you can, and I'll have this, I may have this even at the beginning, I'll probably put it at the end, because we got everything on that last one. I didn't get to take last time. I have to wait. <laughs> The the personalized mm -hmm. yeah. 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 so the red that you put in there, that's what you call a middle tone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Oh, y'all, this is just unreal, man. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> we don't just keep stumbling. Now that you've done one, you know what you're doing? <laughs> yeah, come on around. Yeah. Don't wake up. Don't y'all want to be my job, huh? Yeah. Yeah, we want to be like George when we grow up, too. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we haven't got too much long in the grill. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, really but that's what I always stress. I was just telling Cindy Whittington, showing her the portraits the other night, that the one died on the eye in the right place. It's just unbelievable. I'll tell you what, that, that old spit in the eye died. You know, puts that spit on it. <laughs> As they say in the better art circle. <laughs> You'll have to find it, George. <laughs> Your dot didn't come out right, you used the wrong spit, huh? George, are you using red for the little time? Is that on your face? I don't know what color I'm using. I just put any color now. Just so it's in the right tone, in the right place. And I know that's hard to believe, but uh, that's... I don't believe it. I know, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, I'm saying that portrait. That's what I mean. Yeah. That's why I was saying it makes me feel gutsier and gutsier watching it, because he just goes in and does that. Well, why not? It works. That's right. Yeah. What have you got to lose? Really? I mean, this is... Just do yeah. something, huh, George? Yeah. Do something, man. That's what... Just do it. Wear your Nikes and just do it. <laughs> <laughs> Carla, remember all this is being recorded. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cancel my life. Getting so philosophy too. This yeah. Is yeah. Be, well, we learned some stuff. And he never used a banana. Oh, he was a great teacher. Yeah. 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 Well, in that case, you're probably you right. <clears throat> and I think seeing it the second time with a different model even adds to it, George. I'm glad mm -hmm. you're doing it this way. Whole different color approach. That's right. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. 
it's just like you see when you yeah. Now, you know what's in interesting to me now as he develops this? I told her when I talked to her earlier, I liked her hair. It looked very good in the ponytail, the mm -hmm. shape of her face. And it's a totally different shape than yeah. Melissa had, and yet look at how quickly mm -hmm. he picks out oh, just yeah. the right things yeah. to bring mm -hmm. out. Mm -hmm. Got to try a little green on the neck. Huh? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right, George. He's looking at me all around. Yeah, mm -hmm. you, got, you did, George. Even way over here in the corner. <laughs> They're in the right place? Yeah. Must be. Yeah. It, look, it looks to me like it's saying, who's Joe Lackey? Who is Joe Lackey? Highly overrated. <laughs> I'm sure you can have it done. You have to what use illustration board or something, George, if you can get something to work. She was talking about doing a full size portrait, you can do them anyway. Just you, your paper you buy only comes in that size. <clears throat> They have something on in New Orleans and something yeah, new and it's so bright and colorful. And they are fantastic. Look at the colors he's putting in. Just... Mm. Yeah. You can call this the jam session. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> I don't know. I like your jam session. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But sometimes I think it's unique to watch it done real quickly where you just bump, bump, bump and sometimes you, you can just capture it almost instantly, which he's already done. <laughs> intriguing that reflected light is on the side of the face. You, mm -hmm. you can see it. He makes it jump out with mm -hmm. that top. 
Yeah. You were mentioning one time, George, about that, that angle showing that reflected light about ladies. Uh, what, what was that thing on that again? <clears throat> What was that, Larry? Remember, remember one time you were mentioned about the particular angle of the eye level you had where you pick up that reflected light. Like oh, you, yeah. Uh -huh. You don't want to show a distinct shadow under the neck. Or how, was, how did that go again, Doris? Uh, I don't really... A, a, a distinct shadow where? In other words, okay, on, on the underside of the neck, you just showed that reflected light, and I think you had mentioned that you don't want a real distinct line up underneath there or something like that on the lady. I can't remember the exact thing. But it's it's basically you try to soften that shadow as it comes around the side of the neck. The jawline? The jawline. This line here? Yes. What do you think should change himself? I don't know. I forgot. That's all right. We, we, but I, it was the gist of it was that that reflected light is so important. Uh, well, it, it, in this particular case, if I had my light on this side, I understand. it would even be uh, a little better, probably, right? If I had my side lighting, but I didn't bring it. Yeah, it's another light on this side that shows on the side. Yeah, it kind of extends. But there is a, he lays it on a tray in the back right there. There is another light back there now. He's got his reflected light. Joe. Yeah. But the reflected. Yeah. It just, no, it's a sort of old open bowl that he has and lays in the back back there. Like a refrigerator. Yeah, it's like a refrigerator. Right. Yeah. It lights up this side. And what it does, it's only about a 10 15. Yeah, it's a little bit. Probably nowadays you don't want to run them into it. But if you wanted to get one of them, it doesn't matter. You can order one quite easy. You can just come on and have one. They're expensive. Yeah. Uh, but I, I used to keep one on display at school. I've so got one up on my hand right now. What you do is, is if, if you want to do watercolor, like I've got all watercolors, and all the legs come and then you can tilt it back. You know, the slides you throw them on, you got everything. But this is his portable easel, and he has one that he uses permanently at his studio. And don't forget now, if any of you uh, want to make appointments for portraits, we can get you uh, George's phone number. He's talked to him about it today. We'll set up a time for you. Not pushing it, but uh, you want to do it. Don't put it on. That's right. That's what I tell everybody. Let's push it. It's a great experience. I tell you. I'm getting mine done. I didn't know he does he do guys? He'll do men. He charges extra. Oh, he ought to. Men not charge extra. I can't believe you do that. <laughs> well, it made you come and drag me. Sounds like a ditch. Oh, okay. <laughs> I can wear my dress and you charge me less. <laughs> you go and drag me <laughs> and charge the same as a woman. <laughs> Josephine Lackey. <laughs> <laughs> they treat me bad at home, too, George. <laughs> and that, that is so exciting to watch, George. <clears throat> It is. What's that? Oh, I'm not actually I'm not a character. Oh, yes, I have a civil spent something next week. That's good. It is. It is good stuff. Yeah.
It's a very limited, that's right. Mm -hmm. And you really need to, when you use it, you, you just need to practice. Whatever you use, you just do it. It's like George. George decided one day that he could do portraits. That's how he got into this. And, we, you know, we're talking about no matter how you do it or what you do, you just got to do something. And he, when he found that he could do it, he just practiced and practiced and practiced, you know. And if you want to do portraits, you just practice, practice, practice. And, uh, it won't interfere with what we're doing. In it'll, it'll make everything better. I think I think what Joe said a little while ago is one of the most profound observations about portraits, okay? Mm -hmm. It will it will it will discipline you to observe things. Our biggest problem is we put the hand in action before the brain. Mm -hmm. Okay? And this will make you stop. I mean, and then some of us put the mouth in action. Poor that's my biggest problem. But, but the big thing is, is learning to discipline yourself to, to see. And you'll find that as, as, like in our courses, when you get to the, to the fourth series, like your next series, and you do that little oval painting, and you can ask anybody in the room, that is the turning point of everything you'll ever do, because it's a small painting, you, you work very small, you concentrate on detail, for the first time you start seeing it. So that's what I think portraits does for you. So when I was in the last week, we did portraits two days a week. We did oils, we did watercolors, you know. You do these, there's nothing wrong with doing it all at one time. I just won't let people, like in the middle of their first year, jump from that to something else. I just won't do it. But we can do that at home. If you want to, sure. I do, you can do anything at home. <laughs> no, seriously, you know, but I mean, but I'm just saying, you know, but, but I mean, at I've home is the time you, to do it, you know. I've heard you say, though, that we might jump the gun and get to something that we might end up getting burned head. out. Well, either burned out or getting over your head where you, where you get yourself discouraged. Yeah, I just recently did that. Yeah, and I mean, but then again, everybody's got to do that at some point in their, in their career. You know, you've got to ruin a few. And, uh, I've already done that. Yeah. <laughs> right but, I mean, of course. <laughs> you know, everybody that comes into class, without exception, is impatient. Nobody wants to go through. That's it. And the one thing, it's no big deal what I do. I just make everybody do everything the same way. And, and you understand and you relearn what we all knew at one time in our lives that you got to walk before you cry. I mean, crawl before you walk. Or whatever. Yeah. Whatever you drink in that morning. Walk before you crawl. Please get up. Oh, George, that's fantastic. George, we'll take about 10 more minutes, okay? Okay, Larry. Whoa. Look at that, George. Yeah, for real. I mean, this, this is a hush. It's going to be a 10 minute demonstration. But that way, you know, I think, I think you've gotten the. You've got that opportunity to see him go through the procedure again, and he can hit the highlights, and already captured a real nice likeness. I mean, like everything's already there. That's right. Because see, you can in a sense to do that with a video tape. You see, you know, you can freeze the. That's right. That's right. Oh, you're right. You're right. That's very good. That's really good. Yeah. Yeah. And, and get a really good. Maybe get somebody like Joe to help me next time. We're talking about how if we had photographs of each day, like when he stops and the next day when he stops, it's that you have it in front of you, even with the video. Mm -hmm. you, you know, it's kind of stretched out. Oh, look, that little highlight on that note. Woo, dog. Uh, yeah, we had a little bit of time, so we 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 just gonna we'll go about ten more minutes and we're gonna break. But um, 
you, you know, just look at like the hair on her, her left shoulder. Just a little bit he's got suggested that picks up all those highlights the whole bit already. Right, you know, just. <laughs> Yeah, that's <laughs> 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 Oh, yeah, they're not going. You can bring them back. But I mean, it just, it's just what he does with a few strokes. It's just. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> I'm not trying to push you having your portrait done, but I'm going to tell you all right now, before long, when y'all come to these things, you're going to be the only ones not having them done. You're going to feel, you're going to feel left out. Man. Oh, this is what I love to watch. That's when he starts, oh, oh, man. Does she come alive or does she come alive? You ever get the impression he enjoys what he's doing? <laughs> he smiled the entire time. He was smiling. <laughs> <laughs> this one as he did on the other but if you remember he put the reds and he put the blacks and he put all the other colors the purples and then builds them up that's what's so outstanding
it's amazing how you learn something every time you look at one of them. You know, it's another whole experience. Fire, is that the only color paper you want? That's all he's ever used. Uh, did you get the name of it? You can start carrying some. Velvet gray. Velvet, what is it, uh, Carolyn? Velvet gray. Yeah. I think uh, I think just maybe work on the lips a little bit. We we'll call it finished. Cause uh, you already got a good light. Yeah, there you go. Oh yeah. man, <laughs> he's on the road. Y'all want to take a few more minutes? Yeah, let it. Let take it. Okay, you're not too tired, just you are. No. Okay, cause uh, we we don't want to impose on you now. Uh, it's on the fourth when he's done in two days. Huh? Yeah, he is. Yeah, I can tell he's, he's on the road. Yeah. I'm going to tell you that right now. Mm -hmm. Your hair looks so good. Already, you know, just a little bit. Mm. I tell you what, you keep you keep drawing it. We'll just keep getting you water, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hooking it intravenously. He can do it. <laughs> <laughs> That's the misplanted. That's cruel, Carol. But you know, a cigarette. That's a joke. But you know, anybody get a cigarette? Oh, who's smoking? Somebody get him a cigarette, please. Where's the machine? No, anybody? What kind you smoke, Yard? Any kind. That's that point. Get Carlton's there. Get Carlton's. Who? George had Carlton's. Oh, okay. Any kind. All right. That's nice, man.
actually Scaracina. What? Scaracina. <laughs>
introduce you to a good friend of mine by the name of Mr. George Bolin. He conducted a workshop for us in Biloxi, Mississippi on April 1st, 1989. This was a portrait workshop and uh, 25 of my students attended the workshop and it was something that was an experience that none of us will ever forget. It was thoroughly enjoyed by all of us. Mr. Bowman had a very distinct career in the French Quarter for over 40 years where he received great recognition as a portrait artist, a quick portrait artist, perhaps one of the greatest living portrait artists in the world of this type, was also listed with the historic New Orleans collection. In addition to being a fine gentleman and a great artist, Mr. Bowman also had a very unusual background. He was a Jesuit brother for 10 years. Uh, left the order correctly and eventually wound up in another field and, and essentially what he was destined to become and that was a portrait artist. He moved to New Orleans, Louisiana in the fo late 40s where ironically my first contact with him came when I was eight or nine years old. And as a young lad in the French Quarter, staying with my grandmother on Dauphine Street, I visited him at the Court of Two Sisters, where my aunt worked, and saw some of his pen and ink drawings, and that was the time that I decided I would become an artist. George has a very unique style, as you're going to see. Those who taught him probably went back to the old Met, to the Impressionist. He's almost... 80 years old himself, his mother's 97 years old. They still live in Biloxi. He still does portrait commissions at his home. And in a moment, when I present the information to you uh, on where to get in touch with him uh, through me, uh, he would be more than happy to do your portrait if you would like. His style is unlike anything you've ever seen and that you will see him begin by basically smearing the paper with flat tones. He then uh, takes the end of his pastel and actually literally brings, builds up the form in terms of the lights, middle tones, and darks. Uh, very seldom doing any drawing or any blending. If you would like to have any more information on Mr. Bolin, or concerning this tape, 
Feel free to call me, Larry Casso, at 504-295-1644, or as you can see on the screen, write Larry Casso, Carroll Post Office Box 40461, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, 70835. George, where do you get the nylon to go over your uh, This is a Chinese silk. Oh, silk. Sure. Chinese, Chinese silk. Why uh, silk? Why silk? Because it, it's flexible. And it's absorbent. It, uh, it's stronger and I guess it's... Uh, Smoother, you know, stays, you know, like uh, American silk probably isn't as good. Where do you get it? A uh, fabric shop. Yeah, any place where they sell fabric. Do you have to change it? Oh, no, don't wear it. That's very durable. And you have to ask for Chinese silk. See, this is the rough side. I'm going to use this. Steve, I'm going to set this thing up here now that I don't have a model, but I can get around it right in. Booger, is that his name? Excuse me, am I getting, am I bothering you there, brother? Okay, I'm good. All right. He says, I'm just so happy to be here. Huh? Yeah, I heard that. Uh, uh, George, if I could make a suggestion, please. Uh, and then everybody can kind of ad lib. Uh, remember that day I was at the house and you did that little five minute thing for me where you showed how you did the colors? Yeah. Uh -huh. And, and so what we'll do is maybe he'll show you how he put that base color down because it's that one, two, you remember the first three minutes, like Joe said, he had it. He had it. He had her. And, and I think if we could just see that again just on its own merit and then y'all ask any questions. Uh, as y'all know by now, he's not real temperamental, so y'all can. Uh, well, he can't find his cigarettes. Boy, you got a little frantic there. <laughs> Well, first we put the base tone down, and uh, that's those two colors. 333, yeah, all new pastel, 333 and 204. <laughs> <laughs> size of an eye. In other words, you can look in the mirror and take an eye uh, piece <coughs> of, and measure it. Okay. And, uh, you measure put a joint to figure out if water above the right. <coughs> Mm -hmm. I know. I asked my dad. I said, well, when you're teaching me how to make rocks, I said, that's with your finger, but what about mine? He said, trust me, it works. So y'all see how he did that? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. He layers it in flatly. Then he takes three divisions the length of his chalk, and that's going to be his eyes. Okay, this is the third down, right? No, no, none of that. Forget all of that. You just put him anywhere in the block? That's what he saw. He starts from a totally different, you know, Mommy and Ejectin, do, do you, Jordan? No, no, no. Because they're trying to compare it to the, yeah. you know, how those portrait books break it yeah. up. In other words, uh, now, there's another color. It's called Nut Brown. I forget the number on that. But I'll have it all written down. And that usually is what I use for a already. at the beginning. Yeah. Now, this is the nose here. And this is the two, two eyes. And then you can just, <clears throat> that's why I start every portrait. See, first of all, I put down the 333M, uh, 333 mm -hmm. And then I go over with 204 sandalwood. Mm -hmm. That's the, and then smooth it in. And a rough, uh, see, like the eye, the nose, and the lips. 
And you're doing it looking straight on, or is like they yeah. tilted? Yeah, usually they're posing, you know, sitting in the chair. Uh -huh. Just the they same pose. Yeah. Just, and uh, just, just something like that. Usually it's not that amazing? <laughs> Now see that part about using the nut brown and all of that? Now that's interesting, George. I missed that first time. Well, I, I never, usually I can use uh, another Titan, another one, something like that. Yeah. Either one is okay. Okay. Maybe the nut brown is good for starting because then you can always correct it. It's not too dark. And uh, usually run that line down. And that will also give you the, the edge of the lips up. On each yeah, side, I got to remember. See, and that's yeah. where the eyeballs are. Right. The eyeballs. Well, that's from the side. That right from the from the pupil straight down. Are we being filmed? The, the, yes, from the middle of the pupil down is where you get in the edge of the lips. Now you need to understand, he's posing the model at a at a three quarter view. Okay, that gives you this where you can use these proportions, and that's why it's, it's so always important. the same. It's always the same. Everybody. You see, because that's what fascinated me. Because the distance of your eyes. The distance the between the eyes are your distance, distance of the nose. It's an eye, sure eye distance is. between the nose. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and that, that's very good. And remember, now compared to the way we break the divisions down, if you don't mind me interjecting, George, I'm yeah, trying to compare sure. it to help them out. You notice what he did. Now, that's the space your nose goes in between, and that's always the space between the eyes. You see, that's what fascinated me. And the outer part of the nostrils are... Right. In other words, right, right. Uh -huh. Even though it's at a three-quarter view, okay, and you won't see the, the eye that's behind the nose, it's still that same spatial thing. Mm -hmm. And that's what helps... How's that? What about Jackie Onassis? Well, I don't know, but, but the point is, because of that angle, I used to always wonder how these portrait artists, number one, got the eyes to look like that, and that's what he's doing here. And then secondly, when you bring those lines down at that angle, it always will be the ends of the lips. And you got all your foreshortening, you got everything already in there. Right on, George. Very good. <laughs> and you see, he's kind of proportioning that in there, uh, you know, rather than mechanically blocking it in. But that's when you do it, pay your dues, and do it every day for 40 years. So. <clears throat> then you can start your highlights. You know. Mm -hmm. But you're actually looking at the man in that line, whatever you're doing. Yeah. You're doing that with white. Mm -hmm. Is that white color you use? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> that helps you to get a little idea on the space between the features. <clears throat> and you yeah. just, well, for, the round, for a rounder face here, you just... Well, yeah, you'd be, rounder. yeah, you'd come around. Like that. And he'll do that with shadows or oh, you see straight. Okay. I think the most unique thing about what he's doing is that he develops form. That's why his work has what it has. He, he knows enough anatomy that he develops form instead of mechanically dividing it. Okay? And by way of, of the way that I teach you all, I teach you very mechanically to get you to a point that you can get an, achieve something in a limited period of time. But after you loosen up and you really get to where you, you do it all the time like him, then this gives you a hunt, another whole approach, you see, and that's experience. This is a good exercise to work on an inside for portraits. Another good thing is <clears throat> to get a book called uh, Heads and Hands by Andrew Loomis. You can get that at the one store, like Double Day or something. Yeah, that right. yeah. 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 And that's, uh, that used to be my practice before when I first started on this book. Practice features, practice features are different angles. Okay. And that's, he's very good. He's dead now, but uh, his book is still in print. What was his name? Heads and Hands by Andrew Loomis. And I've got that little $4 book that's by him that I, that I have at the school. Also, the little Foster book, he's got a little small enough. Yeah. And now we have a special on him. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and he's going to have a special on Chinese silk. <laughs> now this is fascinating just to watch this where we concentrate on this by itself. Well, this is Indian. Uh, this is uh, this is really 
not in manufactured now. It's 2937 Indian Red. It's done by Eagle Count. Eagle Is there anything comparable to that? Yeah. Uh, and in New Pastel, there are some pretty strong, close to the <coughs>